Thank you very much, uh, dear colleagues. I really want to thank the organizers for this very kind invitation to participate in this workshop. And now I have the challenging task to stand between you and your lunch. But I'm going to definitely make the most of it. I have a nice opportunity to kind of reflect a little bit upon what, which, what was said in previous presentations. Uh, some very good points already came up. And then I, I'm going to refer to them definitely. Uh, the title of the presentation is Research Indicators for Open Science. I'm going to start about talking about open science a bit more broadly from a funding agency's point of view and tell specifically, as uh, Tommy mentioned in his presentation, that we have implemented some uh, incentives or some ways uh, to enhance open science, so what we have actually done. And then I move uh, towards the research indicators and, and especially talk a little bit about impact indicators and really kind of more maybe raise some questions than give final answers, but what would it mean if we really had indicators and uh, measuring uh, data citations? What kind of things need to be taken into account? And these are basically the lessons we have learned when applying bibliometric indicators, uh, when uh, assessing the state of science in Finland at various levels. So, as mentioned, the Academy of Finland is a funding organization. Uh, we have four research councils and uh, uh, advance the quality and impact of scientific research, renewing of uh, renewal of science and development of research environments. And uh, in our activities, high quality is always the kind of leading thing high impact and responsible research more and more nowadays, as well as the practical application of research and knowledge and skills it generates. Then the same triangle uh, from an open science perspective. So basically, as a funding agency, we require that academy funded projects commit to open access publishing but also at the same time always highlight that first comes the quality in scientific publishing and, and then open access, so uh, that is the order. Uh, we also support, give funding to projects in making their research data and methods freely available and the goal is to make research publications, data and material, metadata and methods widely available for further use. Well, the basic uh, basic thing in, in open science. Uh, and also, I guess it was mentioned uh, maybe in Sarah's presentation earlier, uh, that when you follow the uh, principles of open science, of course you have to take research ethics and the kind of judicial environment into account. Uh, there are various degrees of openness and uh, uh, ranging from fully open to strictly confidential, that's also a possibility in some kind of medical research, for example. And uh, the Academy requires that principal investigators of Academy-funded projects uh, see to that the project's data are stored and made available through major national or international archives or storage services, which are uh, important in, in their own fields. And. Uh, we uh, implemented actually the requirement for a data management plan for the first time uh, this September and from now on uh, it's included in all our calls so that uh, the data management has to be planned already when applying for competitive funding. Uh, as we all know very well uh, openness is a key principle in science. Uh, it produces or promotes the reproduction of scientific results. And openness in practice improves the overall quality and impact of research. And I, I, I really like this part because uh, later I'm, I'm talking, going to talk a bit more in detail about impact indicators. Um, open science forms, this is kind of a, everybody knows this, uh, a principle of good scientific practice, but you cannot kind of highlight this enough. Uh, then, uh, 
a few concrete examples. How have we done this? How have we implemented the open science uh, from a funding agency's point of view? So I already mentioned that uh, there has to be a data management plan where you explain the technical issues, choices, possibilities and limitations for delivering open research data. And uh, kind of from a science point of view also explain these in, in your research plan. But it's very important that uh, the research organizations and infrastructures uh, really support open access publishing and uh, the delivery uh, throughout the research process. Well then, when the application is submitted comes the evaluation and, and these are the concrete questions our international review panels ask. So basically, uh, open science issues are evaluated when uh, the panels look at the uh, quality, overall quality uh, of the research which is proposed and they look at at the same time the ethical issues and then open science. This is not rated like all the other uh, parts uh, when looking at the quality, uh, the feasibility of the research and the uh, research group and their merits. Those are rated, but uh, this is not rated, which I think makes a lot of sense. But the panels are asked to comment on uh, what is the intended a level of open access to research results and is the data management plan worked out in a sufficient way. And one thing I want to highlight is that claiming in the application, if you claim that open, uh, kind of full open access uh, uh, or open research data uh, is as such, is, it is not an automatic option for the best possible review. So uh, there are many ways uh, to argue this uh, and do it. Uh, in a way which kind of produce good evaluation. And then when, when we come to the funding decision, uh, still the key emphasis obviously is on the scientific evaluation, but then the Academy takes uh, into account several science policy objectives and uh, the promotion of open science is then one of them when mainly making the final funding decision. Okay, then you carry out the research, uh, research and uh, hopefully make wonderful publications, uh, open the available uh, story or data, and then comes the time to report to the funder what has happened. Um, the, uh, Jostein mentioned the accountability issue uh, in your presentation and uh, showing the impact of public research funding uh, has become increasingly important. We all know, know, know this. So, and when I say impact, I mean kind of both the scientific impact and obviously the broader impact in the society. But the following, what I'm going to highlight is more talking about the scientific impact and how, how we can measure maybe that than uh, about the broader impact, which would be a kind of a issue, a topic for a completely different presentation or separate presentation. Um, so, we have suggested that open science activities, uh, the, the, what was presented in the data management and in the uh, applications, that the, they would be followed uh, up in the final evaluation, the scientific, evalu uh, final, sci scientific reporting after the funding period. So uh, this is not yet the case, uh, hopefully in the very soon future at the moment. Uh, researchers report the publications they have produced. And we are able to, for example, match the uh, academy funded publications to the web of science data and make kind of small scale bibliometric analysis of the scientific impact of academy funded research. And uh, if you broaden this up and think that in the future, uh, could we do maybe similar analysis also for data, size, data based on data citations and maybe ask the question that does the data which has been created uh, with in Finland's case Academy of Finland funding or other competitive funding, uh, does it have a broader visibility, broader scientific impact than other data produced in Finland? And how does this compare internationally? This is a very interesting question for a funder. Uh, uh, 
uh, but still we are not so far yet kind of opening the landscape with the, what, what there might be in the future. But every time when you talk about bibliometric analysis, uh, the quality of the reported publication data is of really of, of pivotal importance. So it has to be correct, complete, the credit has to go to the right uh, researchers. And I will still come a little bit back to this issue later. So then let's take the path towards analyzing data, say, uh, data citations. Uh, the first question is that what are we really assessing? Are we assessing uh, activity, scientific impact, collaboration uh, or quality? Uh, here I w would like to say that I see that with uh, these kind of indicators you can uh, kind of assess scientific impact but really when you want to look at quality uh, the role of peer review is not going to go away at all and uh, many of these indicators are more like <coughs> proxies of impact but not really direct indicators of quality and uh, indicators metrics doesn't alone provide a reliable overall picture of the level of research they kind of add a useful perspective and raise a lot of questions, but uh, they're more of a mean than actually an end. Well then, when you plan a citation analysis, uh, there are uh, several things you need to take uh, into account. And these examples I'm talking more about uh, from point of view when you assess kind of state of research in a country or in a big organization or in a whole discipline and I'm not talking about how to assess uh, individual researchers or research groups. So uh, when the aggregate is larger there comes the issues that uh, let's say a big university is active in several research fields and there are various types of research data produced in different fields, obvious. Uh, so, and there are also disciplinary differences in citation practices. And if this is true when you talk about publications, most likely this is true when you talk about data. So these things really need to be taken into account, otherwise the indicators, uh, the more aggregate indicators are meaningless. Um, then the role of citation databases, uh, one of the materials the organizers pointed at uh, used the word citation indexing services, so Thomson Reuters databases, Web of Science, uh, Scopus, uh, these are what I'm talking about now. Um, so one important question is the overall coverage. So if you are looking at the broad unit, university field, uh, how well does it cover different disciplines? We all know that when, you are talking, when we are talking about publications, the social sciences, many social sciences, especially humanities, are uh, covered quite poorly in these international citation databases. Uh, then to do any kind of uh, larger scale, scale analysis, analysis, you really need to be able to do automated tracking of data outputs. and. Uh, Sarah mentioned the importance of DOIs, uh, unique identifiers, uh, identifiers uh, and still, so as I said earlier, uh, credit must be assigned correctly to the researchers who actually produce the data output. Uh, but even though you have DOIs and all, all that in place, there still might be a need for data cleaning, especially when you are doing organization or department level analysis. This is very true in bibliometrics. Uh, Web of Science, for example, has mistakes and organization names are written in several different ways. So if you just press the button and think that the numbers are going to come out easily, it won't that work that way. Um, then uh, if you have, if you are trying to measure uh, impact uh, across disciplines, it's very important to take it into account that the citation practices vary and normalize the indicators by research field. Uh, also to make the indicators meaningful you kind of need to uh, compare them to the international level. How are things on average in this field? What is a lot and, and what is a little? 
uh, we often remove in bibliometric analysis self citations when we are analyzing scientific impact not that they wouldn't be important but especially when you focus on impact uh, you kind of want to measure the impact on other other researchers uh, work and then comes the issue of counting methods whether you count so-called based on whole whole counting every for example a collaborative uh, publication or collaborative data set uh, from uh, researcher from three countries, whether all countries get equal one 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 uh, point or shared one third of the point, uh, and uh, researchers have suggested bibliometric researchers that the fractional counting method leads to the most proper field normalization, and that is why that that should be uh, implemented when you are assessing impact. All this kind of highlights the importance of methodological research on research indicators. So the world is not yet ready and, and also this kind of really ground groundwork needs still needs to be done. So finally, uh, I want to conclude by saying the same I said in the beginning that openness really improves the overall quality and impact of research at the best, at its best, uh, when you talk about indicators, when we talk about indicators, disciplinary differences need to be acknowledged and when designing and applying research indicators, the methodological research on indicators is needed and last but by no means least, responsible use of research indicators is super important. Metrics always has its limitations and they need to be acknowledged and taken into account when you interpret the results and also draw conclusions. Thank you. indicators for research quality assessment. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I Thank you. Uh, have you made any experiment in Thomson Reuters web of science uh, about finding data sets there? Have you tried? Well, like really small experiments but not really from an indicator point of view no not yet yeah because I, I would be interested because mm -hmm. our uh, metadata is harvested there so mm -hmm. there should be some social science data and well we have tried some time but I'm not sure how well it's or easily it's found from there if you are looking for the data Something else? Okay. Well, I should have two mics. So, but here we are. It's, it's good for your exercise. Uh, the, as we are all aware, there are these indicators developed in X places where X is a very big number. And uh, my question is, is, do you see any convergence on this? Because I, I'm a bit worried that these indicators, which slightly differ in different countries, the European Commission is developing their own. Uh, I'm a bit worried the, where we end up with this. Do you see any convergence in, in this? Because we need to come to some, I think at least, to some kind of unified indicators at some stage. because. The, uh, this process now is, is a bit uh, uncontrolled, if I may say that. Uh, well, I guess there is no, or I don't know, of a, a golden standard list of indicators, but there are some uh, best practices in terms of uh, how the indicators, even though, even if they had uh, some minor differences that what are the really basics one of them is normalizing and uh, this thing of uh, 
taking the disciplinary differences into account and these kind of issues. So those uh, cold, uh, cold and standards or standards have been uh, published and, and are talked about. And then also, uh, I know it's kind of a wild jungle where it feels that everybody measures kind of similar things in different ways, but then in, at least on a country level, when you kind of re uh, compare the results, many of them are quite similar. So that is also one way to see uh, what, is, uh, what is good and what is not. But then unfortunately there's also kind of a wild use of indicators and, and that's why I, I wanted to highlight the responsible use, especially in decision maker, making and, and when making the conclusions that how uh, long arching conclusions can you actually uh, make. So I would, I would actually again like to ask one question. So, so the academy still, as as we all or everyone is, somehow pretty much in the mode of kind of assessing the publication quality. I mean, I mean, the, the basic unit of scientific uh, pro mm -hmm. production it, it's a publication, and then you kind of have follow the publication citations and. What not, and then the kind of the indicators reflect this. So now there is this more and more thing coming. The data is becoming more and more significant, and and so um, so. Do you see any challenges currently in kind of assessing the quality of kind of the the really data work? I mean, the data sets so or the kind of the work that is being done with to in, in this data, compiling the data, and, and okay, and and I mean, what I mean, if you wanted to assess the quality of data, so what would you like to see to emerge? I mean, I mean, because now currently there are not established uh, ways to. I mean, there are there are mm. no data citations, and mm. there is there is no kind of a no things to measure to kind of assess the quality of data. How good was this data? How do, how do you know? I mean, mm. Sanna puts forth a bunch of data and, and says this is brilliant data. So how do you, how do you assess that? And what, what would you kind of wish to somehow see to be able to assess that kind of this, put the same indicators on data rather than publications? Uh. Well, I guess so. The one question is really, uh, what are the challenges of uh, assessing the quality of data in peer review? So mm. that is one, and then mm. then uh, the uh, funding. So, and even there, uh, we are kind of, in a way, in an early phases. That now mm. it's highlighted more in the evaluation forms and evaluation guidelines, and and we get more experience that. Then. Uh, Somehow I feel that the order is still that a funding funder can promote open science in general mm. and, 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 and making data available uh, openly. And then the indicator development kind of comes next. Mm. So not to go like first indicators and then the actions, but first the actions and, and then the indicators. But of course, as you in, in many of the presentations highlighted that uh, also the measuring kind of can be an incentive mm. to do it better and do it more, and and, mm. and that's yeah. A I was good kind point. of asking. I mean, what mm. would you want to see? I mean, so that you could can measure quality of data. I, mean. I guess uh, what we really would like to see is uh, as many data sets well openly mm. available as possible, mm. and that kind of mm. be inter integrated into the research process. Okay, so let's thank, thank you once again. Oh, there are more questions. Oh. Uh, I, I, I have a comment. Okay. So, because there was my name. Uh, yes, so, yes. <laughs> yes. Even though it was an accident. Anyhow, so I was thinking about the get the comment to Pekka's uh, question. I think that what should be seen there is the reuse of the data. 
sorry, the, the reuse oh, of the oh, data. Oh, so oh. this is a, one of the things that why we are opening the data and putting the uh, efforts on the data sets that they are used in other purposes. Mm -hmm. So I think that in this kind of indicators and, and this kind of analysis, one of the major issues that there should be are indicators to really to show that this data set is reused in some other uh, occasions. Yeah, so great. that would be something that I'm, I'm kind of considering. And also the interdisciplinarity in a way that how, how this is connected to other sciences. Is this data set valuable for the other science fields? So this kind of question I would start asking when uh, making this analysis. I don't know what Andy is going to uh, talk about later on, but there is the RDA working group on, on the data citation which ha is in the production stage where I understand some of the big publishers like Nature, I think Elsevier, Springer, mm -hmm. uh, are involved in and they must have created some kind of, of, uh, of criteria and system for this. So uh, this is a bit of a sales pitch, but uh, mm -hmm. please have a look at the, uh, the output from the data citation working group at RDA.